That's exactly what happened to me. Even my friends, they rejected me. Whenever they see this traumatic experience that happened to me, they couldn't comprehend it. And I was rejected. And I asked myself, why is this, what is this, why is this happening to me? But then I read what Jesus Christ said. He says that they will reject you. He said that they will kick you out of the synagogues. They will stand before rulers and, and kings and they will uh, condemn you for his sake. And I started to realize, oh, it's just all of the pro it's all a part of the process. Whenever the, whenever the Bible says that darkness does not comprehend light, it really makes sense now. That darkness truly doesn't comprehend light. Wow. The Bible says in 1 John, it says this is the message that we have heard. This is the message that we have handled, that we have tasted, we have handled with our hands. That God is light and in him is no darkness. If we claim to have this light, but yet dwell in darkness, we lie and deceive ourselves. I can contest to this that this is a true fact. If you encounter Jesus Christ, there is no way you can stand in the same exact way that you were standing. If you encounter Jesus Christ, there is no way you can stay the same way. There is a transformation. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ wants to do for you. Jesus Christ wants to transform you. He wants to make you a new creation. The Bible says all things pass away and behold, all things become new again. The past sins that you had in your life, Jesus Christ wants to take that from you. And your life from that point on, he wants to guide you and lead you, lead you into all understanding and into all righteousness. That's the God that created the heavens and the earth. The God that created the heavens and the earth gives you the ability to overcome temptation. The God that created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says that as he walked this earth and yet was without sin, he was tempted in every way and yet without sin. And the next verse says, as he has overcome sin, he is able to uh, secure you so that every time that you're tempted, you can overcome as well. See, it's not the fact that some re for some way uh, you, you naturally was able to overcome temptation in the flesh. No, Jesus Christ wants to live inside of you. And he wants to live with you. This is why Paul the Apostle says, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives inside of me. That is the reason why Paul said that. Because Christ wants to live inside of you. He wants to, he wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to, to, to lead you into all righteousness. And a lot of people, they wink at that word. They wink at these things that Christ wants to do for us. But Jesus Christ also said in the book of Matthew, he said, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Meaning the Pharisees, the religious leaders at that time who said that they obeyed the law, who said that they obeyed God, the people that they looked at and, and looked at as if they were high and mighty and so righteous, these people were hypocrites. But since they were hypocrites, doesn't mean that Christ wants you to be less than them. Jesus Christ says that he wants you to be greater than them. Whatever they told you to do, do it. But whatever they didn't do, you do. If they told you to do this in the law, but you didn't do it. I mean, if they told you to do something in the law and they didn't do it, don't worry about what they didn't do. You do it instead. Since they didn't know, know how to obey the law and the spirit, you obey the law and the spirit instead. This is what Jesus Christ said. Don't think that I have come to destroy the law, but rather I have fulfilled the law. He fulfilled it. Paul the Apostle says, we establish the law. So yeah, we're not walking around in the, law, the days of Moses anymore, stoning people and all these things, but these things have a representation. The representation is that the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. These things have a representation in the spirit. They have something that they want to explain to you in the spirit. 
just like how Moses uh, wrote the, the Ten Commandments in stone, the Bible says that this new covenant, he will write his commandments on your heart. He will put these things on your heart. So that you don't have to worry about if this stone breaks or if, uh, you know, it's going to turn into dust sooner or later. No, it's in your heart now. So you don't need to read in the Bible, thou shalt not kill. No, you already know thou shalt not kill because your conscience has the law of God already in it. You don't need to hear thou shalt not steal. Your conscience already tells you thou shalt not steal. This is why in the book of Romans, the Bible says that no man is without an excuse because our conscience accuses us or excuses us. It accuses us when we do right, when we do wrong, and it excuses us when we do right. We didn't need anyone to tell us, don't do that. We already knew it. This is why you can go everywhere in the world and we all have that same conscience of if you were to kill somebody right now, we all will be mad. If I was to kill you, you, would, you wouldn't want me to kill you. So therefore, if I don't want you to kill me, why would I kill you? That's just the natural logic that God has put in our mind. If I don't want you to steal from me, why would I steal from you? If I don't want you to cheat, uh, if, if I don't want you to sleep with my wife, why would I sleep with yours? That is the natural law that God has written on our hearts. So yes, for the atheists who say, where is God? We don't have to answer that question. You already know. You already know. You no longer have to willfully reject truth. You don't have to suppress the truth and unrighteousness anymore. We all know that there is something that created this thing that we call Earth. There's a building behind me. Who created that? A builder. So if that thing exists behind me, the fact that we're standing on Earth right now, it shows that there is a creator of the Earth. That's natural logic. Even Einstein talks about how nothing could just create itself. It didn't just come from nothing. And that's just a part of the laws of physics. What about the laws in, this, in the spiritual world? Because we know the spiritual controls the physical. There are things in this world that we can't taste, touch, see, or feel, but they're there. Like emotions. They're there. Somebody hits you, you get sad. Why is that here? Did the universe create that? Of course not. The logic that we use, did the universe create that? No, it didn't. How come we can't explain these things? We don't have to. We all know that God is real. We all know that God has put us here for a reason and I'm here to tell you today that God has put us here for the reason to love him and to love him only and not only for us to love him but he wants to love us back he's already shown his love for us he died on the cross for us even though he knows most people won't love him even though he knows most people won't receive him even though he knows most people will completely reject him, he died on the cross for us. That's right. He died on the cross for us. The scripture says, what greater love is it for a man to die for his friends? But Christ didn't just die for his friends but he died for his enemies as well. See, when we disobey God, God bless you, bro. When we disobey God, we become an enemy of God. And yet Christ still died for us. The scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ was thinking of you. And he already had a plan. The scripture says, God already foreordained this plan that he had for us. I'm not saying that God forced you 
to sin or anything like that. But since you sinned, God already set up this plan to save you. See, it's a reason why God didn't just completely kill Adam and Eve right then and there. God showed them grace even after their disobedience. See, this disobedience of uh, reje uh, rejecting the commandments of God, God gave them grace and still covered them. And this foreshadow of covering was a covering of their sins, which Christ wanted to do. See, God is already telling you to plan from the very beginning. From the first book of the Bible, God has told you to plan. That he has come to cover your sins and bring you back to the Father. He has come to cover your sins and reconcile you to the Father. Because the Bible says that our sins separate us from God. But since our sins separate us from God, now what? What's the solution? Jesus Christ wants to reconcile you. Paul the Apostle says that we have the message of reconciliation. And God wants to reconcile you. We have received this reconciliation. And you can receive this reconciliation back to the Father as well. Repent and believe the gospel the scripture says. Whenever the, the people asked him on a, the day of Pentecost, they said, what shall we do? Peter looked at them and said, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins and that you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This gift of the Holy Ghost is one of the greatest things that you can ever have in your life. This is one of the most important things that you need in your life. Without it, you can't overcome sin. Without it, you can't love God. Without it, you won't know what to do. You're going to be a lost soul walking around in the wilderness looking for a light. But I'm here to give you a, a, a blessing today that Jesus Christ is that light. The scripture says that God is that light. And this is the same light that lit every single man in this world. Don't you understand that this is the same light that was in the very beginning? If the sun was created on the third day, but God said, let there be light on the first, what was that light? This light is Jesus Christ. And God wants to give you this light. He wants to make you the light of this world so that you can show this light. Among the among the generations. What's up, bro? Are you ready? Oh yeah. You got your kids today? Nah, I don't got my kids today, man. Yeah. They were my mom. I mean, they were my uh, my wife.